Hey, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to the Writer's Bookshelf series. We are on episode number nine, if my math is correct. And today we are going to do a book that I'm actually not finished reading yet. What? No. No, 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 no. We're not, we're not going to do a book that I have not finished reading. Yeah, we are. Yeah, today's the day. We're going to do one I'm in the middle of reading. Um, but it's a good book. And this is something where, uh, just a little bit of backstory. Uh, there's an actual commercial author out there who I had the privilege of talking to a while ago, about 10 years ago. Um, but I was telling him one of the ideas I had for my superhero novel, and he ripped it apart in five minutes. Like I had worked on this thing for two years at, by that point. And it wasn't one novel. It was, it was I think I was on the third book at that point. And this is, you know, before indies were really taking off and where the market was still in traditional publishing. And I mean, his, his advice to me, it was, you know, I understood it. He said, you know, why are you going to write the third book if you haven't sold the first book? Well, you know, it made sense at the time, but my thought was, well, I should have, I, I should at least make sure that if I broke something, you know, like, or if I write something in the third book that I really need to work and something in the first book makes that impossible, well, then I need to go back and fix the first book so that it's no longer impossible. And that way, you know, reader will never know that it was something different before because it never got published. And that was kind of my thinking. And I know, you know, this is again before the indies really kicked in. Um, now that's kind of common practice is to write as much of the series as you can out the gate before you publish the first book. So that if you have to make those changes, you know, you can do that safely. It's common practice now. But when I had this conversation with this famous author, I'm not going to name because I don't want to, you know, do that. But, um, but that was the thing is, I guess when you're traditionally published, that's not how you write. You, you have to get the first book before you can get the rest. And which is another advocation for not going traditional, if you can help it, you know, because it's true if you try to sell the book and they don't want it, or if, if you sell the first book and they decide, well, it didn't sell that well, so we're not going to do your other eight books. You're like, wait, but they exist. Yeah, but we're not going to publish them. What? No. I want my other eight books published. Yeah, not going to happen. So indie marketing is better for series, in my opinion, because at least you can be sure you'll do it and get it out there but anyway um this author even though he wasn't forward thinking in that respect he was still very good at his job and so he took this i, I told him my concept that i was working with and, this, and basically the plot line of the story i was working with and he buried it within five minutes i mean coming up with questions i never thought of before like i was like i felt embarrassed by it I'm like i should know better but no because you know when you don't have you know people giving you serious feedback when it's just, hey, this is good, and when they're not really used to what stories should be, it's not really effective feedback, right? And so, you know, you don't get those hard lessons where there's, um, you don't get that honest feedback. And this guy, he doesn't owe me anything. He, you know, and he's professional. I mean, he's, he has editors. He's, he makes a lot of money off his books. There's a movie made after one of his books. Um, my understanding is it's not a very good movie. I haven't seen the movie. I've only read two of the books, but either way, you know, guy clearly was in a better position to know the craft than me because he's had more time to work with it. And, um, you know, he's just he's smart dude. And so he punched a hole in it. And that's when he directed me to the book that I'm about to share with you today. And at the time, I think the book was already out of print. Uh, it was only in the third edition, and he he read it. It's more of a screenwriter's book than a novelist book, but he read it for you know to learn how to you know actually structure a story, and he's applied it to his books. And again, he's a bestseller with a movie based on one of his books. You know, it's a very successful franchise. Um, I think he's won a couple awards, and uh, you know all this you know came as a surprise. I just I had no idea that this was around the corner, but there it was. And, so anyway, he told me about this, about this book, and I forgot about it, to be honest, um, partly because it's a screenwriting book. B, I just I didn't really know what I was going to learn from it. Um, but C, I just it, I thought it was out of print. Like, how am I going to get this book? Well, fortunately, um, and I'm recording all of these all at once in September. I don't know. Um, so nine weeks from now, I guess this, you're probably watching this late October is when this will go live. Um, this came out in early August, I think. So I've had this book for about a little over a month. I actually, I bought it directly from the site. So I got it a couple weeks before the shelf date. But um, anyway, 
it's the fourth edition of uh, the series that we're covering. So it's the same book, but the fourth update to it. Um, and if you've caught the title, you already know what we're going to cover. We're going to do The Writer's Journey by Christopher Vogler. And again, this is uh, was written for screenwriter. Oh, and there's my bookmarks. You can see I'm, this is how far I am at this moment. By the time you watch this video, I'm probably going to be finished with it because I'm reading a chapter a day. And again, this is uh, I'm recording all of these in one go. So this will probably air about nine weeks after I'm recording it. Um, so there's plenty of time to catch up. Um, hopefully you're not still locked down. Hopefully things are back to normal by then. I have no idea what's going to happen nine weeks from now. But uh, hopefully you're watching this you know, from a place of happiness. Um, anyway, um, but the, yeah, this, this is the title that he recommended that I read. And what this is, this is um, the story is that this guy, Christopher Vogler, I think he worked for Disney. And he wrote this memo on, you know, the hero's journey based on Joseph Conrad's book, The Hero with a Thousand Faces. And it was a seven page memo that he gave to the execs at Disney. And I think Pixar, they used it. But it's the model that Pixar uses to tell all of their stories. And uh, he decided to, I think he wrote, um, there's a chapter in here called, it's like the, the very first chapter. It's um, preparing for the journey. No. Sorry, Practical Guide is the name of it. Practical Guide is the uh, the pamphlet that he made based on the memo. And that got around Hollywood. And it got to the point where like reviewers were getting pissed off at movies that took uh, their cues from the Practical Guide. Because they all kind of looked the same. Well, no, they really didn't. Because what they did is they've taken this idea of the hero's journey and they've adapted it to their story. Um, but the reason why he wrote this memo and then wrote this practical guide and then followed up with this full length, you know, full size book. It's because it works. It's, it's a, it's a well-known classic archetype. It's, you know, it's entire Greek myth is based on this. Um, actually I think human history is based on this. If you read the Bible, you'll see that that a lot of the, you know, stories are laid out on the same hero's journey. Um, and, uh, most anything you read, Lord of the Rings, um, you know, any any fantasy game you play uh, that's any good. Um, even something like, uh, I don't know, Batman. Like, these all have hero's journeys. They, they all have the structure of, you know, um, receiving, or what is it? It's uh, the ordinary world, then, you know, getting the uh, hero's calling, refusing the call, and then, you know, uh, was it call to action, or that's the second one? There's like 15 points that you have here. It's um, 12 points. You have ordinary world, call to adventure, refusal of the call, meeting with the mentor, coming or crossing the threshold, uh, test allies and enemy. That's actually the chapter I'm about to start. Um, approach, uh, and so on. It goes throughout the whole circle. Every major story structure, theory, or premise kind of has a similar arc to this. It fits the three-act structure in well. Um, you have the first act is your call adventure stuff and then when they have the threshold you know when, when it's uh, crossing the threshold is the name of the part where you move into act two uh this is where the real journey begins um another book we're going to do very soon called save the cat talks about those same kind of principles um it, it follows along this this kind of story arc that takes the hero from beginning back to the beginning but changed and it allows it, it shows how to get your hero through this this improvement of his character. And so, one of the things that we learn in, in story writing and story structure and just character development, all of that stuff, is you have two types of characters. You have the character who changes through the journey, and then you have the character who changes others by the journey. So you have the, the catalyst um, can be the story, or the catalyst can be the hero. And but something changes, and so part of the hero's journey is to emphasize that change. Again, either the the hero changes or the world around him changes, something changes. And so one of my favorite story types that I've been doing probably since I was a kid is the fish out of water story, where you take an ordinary character and you put him in this really backwards place or vice versa. You take this really odd character and you put him in a normal place. Either way, I just always found that a fascinating archetype to, to run with. And much of what the hero's journey is, is based on that idea of the fish out of water, taking somebody who doesn't belong and, and making them learn who they are through the process of going to the place they don't belong 
and a lot of our best stories go through that and so this whole book i mean it's a well it's not is i know it looks thick it's actually it just has thick cardstock pages it's only uh well actually no it's almost 500 pages never mind it's that book it's a fat book with really cool illustrations uh, you know, this is this is one of my favorite books in a while. It's uh, how much? I paid thirty bucks for it. Actually, I paid twenty five, but I paid five dollars in shipping. Um, so it, it's a little pricey, but you know, it, it's it's one of those books that aren't just good to read. It's just good for the shelf. Literally, like like it's the book you put face forward, so everybody who you invite over will see that book and you think, hey, that looks like a cool book. I want that. Well, or at least I want to see it. Yeah, it's it's a good looking book. It's not just a good book to read. It's a good book to look at. So um, the, that's again the fourth edition. Um, that's the brand new one. It's uh, you know, I was just saying things good, but but yeah, they cover um, the whole hero's journey from beginning to end. But they that's part two. Yeah, part two. I didn't even talk about part one. Part one is they talk about the character archetypes. Um, now I have other books about character archetypes. I'm deliberately not talking about those because I don't kind of frankly don't like them. To be honest, uh, I will probably cover one of them just for in case you do like it. Um, I, I probably should. You know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna do a cheat here real quick. I'm gonna pause the video and I'm gonna get one of those books real quick just so we're complete. Hold on. Okay, normally won't do two books in once, but I think today I will because I really don't want to devote an entire video to this one. The 45 master characters. Um, I do think it's a good resource to have because it's all about characters and the character archetypes. It's just really boring to read. I, I am not, it's not the kind of book I enjoy reading. Um, so that's why I'm not doing an entire series on it. I can't imagine you'll enjoy it either, but it is important. Um, so anyway, there's your, your heads up. I may do like a season two uh, series on this one. Um, but for now, yeah. I just, it's worth knowing. Anyway, Writer's Journey, they, um, it also has archetypes. It has, but it keep, it's actually interesting in how it develops them. Um, you've got the hero's personality. You can talk about that. Um, but you also have people like the hero. You know, who's your hero? Talks about how to identify who your hero is. Talks about one of my favorites, the mentor. You know, the guy who uh, basically sends your guy off the glass. What I like about this is it um, it doesn't just tell you why they're helpful. Sometimes it can tell you why they thwart your hero. Like, some mentors are not good mentors. Some of them are deliberately steer your hero wrong. And so it goes into both the, the positive and negative types of, of character arcs. That's why I really like this one. It's, it's accessible. It doesn't cover everything. Like, this one here, the 45 Master Characters, very extensive. Um, I will say I'll recommend it just for this video uh, because it does cover a lot of the types you might want to look into. Um, but I, I, it's one of those books I don't really see it as a... I mean, I don't know. You can try it if you like it. Great. Tell me in the comments that you liked it and that you think I just have a short attention span. But um, actually, no, no, maybe you know what? I did read this at the gym. Maybe, <laughs> maybe I should read it at home. I think we'll do a separate video on this. We'll talk about it another time. It's actually probably not a bad thing to cover, but probably not this season. It'll probably be a season two book. Anyway, I'll set that down. Um, that's your preview. Uh, but Writer's Journey, it's, uh, again, based on Joseph Conrad's The Hero's uh, Journey or The Hero with a Thousand Faces. And it's written primarily for screenwriters, but again, this is an important thing to remember. Screenwriters and novelists, they have one thing in common. They're telling stories, and stories are based on something familiar that every one of us has in our system if you look at your own life i promise you you have a three-act structure in there somewhere you know if every you know when you what, what did you do today well you got out of bed you know that's the ordinary world maybe something broke well now you're here's your call to adventure now you have to go fix it right you don't want to go because it's got to get in your car and with covid you got to put on a mask and you're like i don't want to leave but you want your coffee. You want you want your coffee maker to work. And you got it, and you, it's gonna be cheaper to replace it than to fix it. So you gotta go to Target. You gotta go to Walmart. Get your new coffee maker. So you're like you refuse the call, but now you're gonna now you gotta go. And so you're gonna cross that first threshold. You're gonna get in your car. You're gonna go on to Target. 
And of course, you're gonna have to deal with the threshold guardians, the people that tell you, wear your mask, or we're gonna kick you out of the store. So you gotta, you know, but they're there to help you, you know, and, and there you go. Continue on through your hero's journey until you get back and you plug in your coffee maker and you're like, now it's time to go to bed. Because <laughs> the day's over. But you learned something today, right? You are a better person because you have a better working coffee maker. The hero's journey applies to you even today. Mark on that. Anyway, uh, definitely get this book. Um, so if you're keeping score, we've been covering a lot of structure uh, this season. Uh, we're going to have at least one more structure book next week. Uh, I've already mentioned it. And so, you know, it's, it's going to be Save the Cat. Just, you know, word of warning. But um, I definitely think that uh, this is something that you'll get a lot out of. I think it's, again, it's not just a good book to read. It's a good book to have. I do not recommend getting the ebook for this one. You should have a hard copy. It's going to set you back 30 bucks. It's 30 bucks worth it because it looks really great on the bookshelf. Sometimes it's about the appearance, right? No, I'm kidding. It, it, who cares? But it's still, it's, it's a good book. It's, I think it's one of my better purchases in a while. So, um, that's why I'm doing the, the review on it now, even when I'm not finished. Cause I just, it's, it's not going to get worse. It's not going to, you know, all of a sudden tell me, huh, just kidding. It's not about this at all. It's not going to be any surprises. It's pretty straightforward in what it's about. So highly recommend it. And uh, you should get it. Writer Stern. Once again, Christopher Rogler. Okay. So I uh, hope you uh, liked this video. Hope you uh, got something out of it. Again, don't forget to comment if you have any feedback you want to give about the book you books you've read. If you want to give me suggestions for season two titles that you're interested in. Um, we'll probably do that after the 16th episode of this uh, season. Um, but yeah, it's uh, definitely tell me, give me feedback, what you like about the books that we've recommended and uh, what you're learning. Have you started writing something? Um, I want to emphasize that if you have something you want readers to read, you're welcome to post your links to your blogs or your Wattpad or whatever you're doing here in the comments. Um, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. So if you'd like people to check it out and you know, give you feedback, go ahead and post in the comments. Maybe you'll get a response. Um, and then also make sure you like and subscribe to the channel and um, do all the things that YouTubers tell you to do. And then come back next Friday, 10 o'clock, or after you work. And uh, stay tuned for our next video on our next book, which again, I've already spoiled it. It'll be Save the Cat. But what I haven't told you is what you save the cat. Spoiler. Right, until then, next time. <laughs>